Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of To Be Released. I'm here with Zenrot. Hello. How's it going, Zen? Good. To Be Released, not a fucking adventure, by the way. No, it's not. I think uh, people... <laughs> Here's the funny thing is that I've started to realize that there will be certain things where I won't say, are you ready for another adventure, just because they have a name to them. So it's like, why why double up on it? You know what I mean? I can't say, hell everyone, it's to be released. Are you ready for a fucking adventure? It's too much of a yeah. mouthful. <laughs> That's true. It's too much. And you'll see that with another series that will be coming out. Um because it has such a long title, I won't be able to say, are you ready for a fucking adventure? So look forward to that <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> uh, I understand. I understand completely. Yeah, Very yeah. important. Exactly. Very important. So I wanted to talk about um, anime OPs for a bit, just because I've been watching a lot of um, Revolutionary Girl, Utena. And it has an OP. And I don't know if you're the same way, but whenever I see an anime OP, I have to figure out whether or not this is trying to tell me something or if it's all just very pretty images. Do you know okay. what I'm saying? Like, for example... Uh, sort of. The ones I can think of like are that are just pretty images here to like get you excited, that's that's a Dragon Ball style OP. That's like sure. super where it's like, but you know, like, and here's a bunch of Jiren fighting, but it doesn't really tell you anything other than, I don't know, maybe they'll fight Jiren. I don't know. Did it have Ultra Instinct? In it? Did it? It had the actual scene where Goku stands up and then he like, he's in the Kaioken red, but then he blows it away and he comes out and fights Jiren. It's not straight up Ultra Instinct, but it was a full on hint that there's going to be a new form. Okay, but for the most part, that's not what it's there for. It's not to tell you, like, um, yo, get yeah, ready. Yeah, generally, it's just hype noise. Yeah, it's just it's just hype. It's there for the hype. But then there are some anime OPs that will try and hide specific story beats inside the OP. They'll be like, okay, if you were paying attention to the OP, it actually told you everything you needed to know. So... What I think well, this is a kind of like a halfway example. A lot of the JoJo OPs are like that. Of like when you're watching it, like it looks like it's just a bunch of stuff happening. But then once you know what's happening, it's very clear. Like, oh, this is just actually what's going to be in the anime. Right. It's just like actually what's going on. Yeah, exactly. So I was watching this and I was like, okay, now I need to figure out whether or not this is trying to tell me something, uh, or if it's just a bunch of images going forward. And for right now, my current stance is I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a third style of uh, op which is i just consider it its own thing which is a paranoia agent where i think it's trying to tell me something but it might actually just be a bunch of pretty images that i'm not 100 percent. i'm still you know i've after watching it so many times still not sure still not sure for anyone who has not seen the paranoia agent uh opening they should see it it won't tell you anything you won't know what the hell was going on for the most part. And I've been trying to figure out what the hell's been going on in that OP for like mm, close to two years since I watched it. It's fantastic. Okay. That's yeah. fair. <laughs> yeah. All right, Zen, let's talk about who's going to be put on the big boy scale. We okay. got. Let's do it. We, we got. Um, I believe his name is. Limitless combat power. I'll just give a quick. It's going to be the transforming Vegeta, copy Vegeta. Then it's going to be you, and then it's going to be me. Names. God bless copy Vegeta. God bless copy Vegeta. Let's start with the show with a show stopper. It is copy Vegeta. His title is cloned powers. Copy Vegeta, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan. Uh, leader skill is extreme class three key, HP attack and defense forty percent out. So watch out. He's a powerhouse when it comes to the leader skill. His super attack is Clone Rush, and his passive skill is called Copied Ability, which is attack and defense 60%, plus an additional attack and defense 30% up, up, up to 90% at start of each turn, and all enemies attack and defense minus 30% when there's a Vegeta family category enemy. And his link skills are Metamorphosis, Infighter, Tough as Nail, Shocking Speed, More Than Meets the Eye, Prepared for Battle, and Shattering the Limit. And his categories are Transformation Boost and Artificial Life Forms. And he is a free-to-play unit where you can get him in the story event, which is, I guess, based off of the what I assumed was just filler in the Super anime. But I guess it's all canon, right? There is no actual filler in Super. Uh... 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on what you quantify filler as. I mean, if you call it like filler is just stuff that's not in the manga, though, then that's impossible for Super because there is no manga. Yeah. Um, but I, I think filler would generally be something that just isn't directly plot related. Like I, I certainly would call the episode where Vegeta and his family go to a theme park. I would call. It well, but he's uh, that that one's at least basing it off the fact that Vegeta at one point said, if you stop crying after I punch you, Trunks, I'm going to take you to the amusement park. Yeah, I'm not saying it's not canon. I'm just saying it doesn't it doesn't aid the plot in any way. Mm. It's just an episode of uh, like slice of life, life, like the baseball episode is filler. Mm. I guess, yeah, it kind of depends on what you consider filler. Because I always assumed it was something that would be, yeah, not not in the manga. So. It would be like because there there is occasionally weird stuff that doesn't really aid the plot in certain um, manga. It's just really weird, and there, it doesn't really go to anything. Yeah, but, I think manga can have filler arcs too. Yeah, it's like stuff. It's the in between stuff before you get ready for the next arc, so to speak. Yeah, uh, horror mangas certainly have a bunch of just like here's a short story about this one girl for this one chapter because you know the people who like this girl have been waiting a while for a single chapter. It, it's like a shonen version of that where there's a fight with like copy vegeta where uh, G- vegeta finds a bunch of goo and suddenly the goo is as good as he is for some reason uh yeah pretty much yeah well actually trunks and goten find the goo they find the goo how does well the... so jocko finds the goo um so Jocko gets the goo, and or he wants to go get the goo, and, and then Goten and Trunks stow away on his ship. And then you, Vegeta finds out and goes after them. I'm are you sure, sure it's not Monaka? Oh, they stow away on Monaka's thing. That's right. It is okay. Monaka. Okay. Better known as the nipple fighter. That uh, was a big joke. Who ended up yeah, being a big joke. gag fighter. Yeah, as uh, it's great because if you look back in the timeline of, you can tell that uh, the uh, DB YouTubers were trying to figure out, okay, what's this mean? Trying to find meaning in something. It's all the theories on Monaka, which is great. <laughs> I'll watch yeah. all those. Monaka's power revealed. Question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah. And we have a bunch of friends who have also made that. I think they'll also equally go like, man, what <laughs> what a time. What a great time. Yeah, man, those were the days. <laughs> The old I, Id Monaka really strong days. Oh, you know what we should do? This maybe would have been better off screen. We should get a uh, Defree in, and then we should uh, do a commentary over his Monaka video. The when, <laughs> so we'll we'll be like, okay, so we're going this step into a Defree. What was your mindset? And how do you feel now <laughs> that stuff has been revealed? An interview on a Monaka fan. Yeah. It's like, all right, we're going to, we'll figure, you know, we'll talk more about this off screen. Nobody tell Deepree that we're going to do this until I tell Deepree we're going to do this. <laughs> uh, to get back to copy Vegeta, his passive skill is pretty good for a free to play unit. The only problem is, is that it's only good against Vegeta. And like, Which literally also like, so kind of funny. Yeah. It, that, you know, fair enough. That is funny. Um, the problem is, is like two thirds of his passive. I think he only gets attack and defense sixty percent up, and you don't get any of the extra benefits unless there's a Vegeta family. So against a Vegeta, he just gets sixty percent attack and defense, which is blah. But then, as soon as he fights a Vegeta, suddenly he's way better. So, yeah, that's kind of this guy. It's a uh, he also for some reason isn't on Realm of Gods, but then it answers the question of is it. Are you a god if you're goo? And I guess in this case, no. The goo is not god. Apparently not, yeah. No, his hair is blue. Yeah, he's 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 just a copy Super Saiyan blue, so he's yeah. not a... Monkey see, monkey do, so to say. Except, uh, Correct. <laughs> monkey goo, monkey do, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> So how are you feeling about that? I also want to say that he was able to get shocking speed when I think transforming Vegeta does not have tra- shocking speed. <laughs> Let me check one of his many forms to see if he gets shocking speed in any of them. He does not get shocking speed in any of his other forms. <laughs> Slow bitch. 
He's a slow ass bitch compared to this goo. This goo fucking goes at the <laughs> fifty miles per hour compared to Vegeta's That's slow ass. Super animation. Is he like flies around super fast? Oh, you know what? That's fair enough. Fair enough. And he's tough as nails. You know, he's everything you want from a Vegeta. Uh, except for he's goo. From an Ivan Ooze esque Vegeta, yeah. Oh god, if Ivan Ooze if Vegeta was affected by Ivan Ooze's power just like Bobbity <laughs> I got the Ooze to be stronger than you, Kakarot <laughs> with the power of Ivan Ooze. You really gotta stop falling for these evil wizard's tricks, Vegeta. <laughs> Fall for what, I Kakarot? I did I it on purpose. I did it to become more powerful than you. I am a Saiyan that goes beyond goo. I am super goo. <laughs> Alright, what are you feeling about <laughs> Copy Vegeta here? Our boy Copy Vegeta. Um, 10 out of 5. 10 out of 5 for the goo? I'm the kind sheer of... fucking audacity for... to put this unit in the game and specifically make him shit on vegeta whom i hate is just oh it's like poetry you know what fair enough there's very they even released a transforming vegeta that is weak to this to mm -hmm. this guy only <laughs> only weak to this guy sure fucking did all right you know i'm kind of gonna go with that I'm gonna, I'll, I'll give him a five out of five for just the pure audacity of the entire moment that gives him a, t a 15 out of five on the big boy scale <laughs> Just I also, the balls on these people to do that is just—it's—it's it's not only that; it's also the fact that they actually made him very good against Vegeta. That's the thing that's like killer. Yeah, he's like amazing when he fights Vegeta. Like he's a counter character. It's so great. Yeah, it's really funny. I'll give—I'll give you that. You know what? When you put into the factor, also he kind of looks like he's going uh, Super Saiyan three with his weird fucking body proportions. <laughs> So there you go. 15 out of 5 for Copy Vegeta. Fucking love Copy Vegeta. Yes. So, okay, let's go into this transformation Vegeta. I'm going to try and... I'm just going to give you the first form, and then I'm going to give you the last form. Because I feel like all the in-between stuff is just a small build-up to the final. Which you'll never get to the final form anyway. So his name is Limitless uh, Combat Power Super Saiyan Vegeta. His leader skill is pure Saiyan's three key attack defense and HP 150% or super class key 100% attack defense HP and three key. Uh, super attack is the big bang attack as expected, but I think it changes throughout all of them. I know in, what is it? Super Saiyan 2, he does the dunk, the final burst uh, cannon. Oh, does he? That's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you That's can see. That's one of cooler looking moves. Yeah, you. If you want to see the dunk in action, watch our video in which he fight, in which we fight this transforming Vegeta with children. Yes, with children. Very important to say that. Uh, his passive skill is called "This is Super Saiyan," which is maybe the funniest thing ever. <laughs> is it through? Is that? Is it throughout? Oh, okay, no, it's different every single. Okay, okay, I need to go. Passive skill for the Super Saiyan one is "This is Super Saiyan," and then it goes to "Beyond Super Saiyan." Overwhelming combat strength. Form needed really? for victory. Not, this is called Super Saiyan 2? That's depressing. No, well, because he goes Super Vegeta next. Oh. Yes, yeah, so Super Vegeta is beyond Super Saiyan. Super Saiyan 2 is overwhelming combat strength, which I think is also the name of the STR Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta's um, thing. Um, his Super Saiyan God is called Form Needed for Victory, and then Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan is Saiyan's Vow and Resolve. But still, this is Super Saiyan Fantastic for the first one. And it, the passive skill is attack defense 80% plus an additional attack uh, 6% per key spear obtained transforms when conditions are met, which is just basically a turn passes. And uh, from that point on, he gets basically 10% and 1% to the passives, attack and defense, until finally he reaches uh, Super Saiyan God. Super Saiyan, which is just Super Saiyan Blue. I don't know why I'm saying the full thing. Where its attack and defense is 120% up. Plus an additional attack, 10% per key spear obtained. And then, probably the funniest passive in the world, he changes all key spears to physical key spears once only. I just want to point out that I'm being very polite because you're saying spears, not spears. spears. Is it spears or spears? Spears. There's, spheres. there's circles. There's spheres. Spheres. Orbs. 
change all key orbs to <laughs> <laughs> physical key yeah, orbs. Yeah, orbs. Orbs. Sometimes I have problems with my words. If you watch all my videos, you know for a fact based on the number if of times. If you watch any video that you've ever made. If you watch any of my videos ever I made where I say like, all right, Zen, are you, come on, let's go. Like you can see like I get tongue tied, but like I get tongue tied between the word let's and can for some reason. <laughs> it transforms into something else. Uh, and then the basics of his link skills are Super Saiyan, Royal Lineage, Prodigies, Saiyan Pride, Golden Warrior, Prepared for Battle, Fierce Battle, and his categories are Realm of Gods, Pure Saiyans, Full Power, Transformation Boost, and Vegeta's Family. Oh boy. So that's the Transforming Vegeta. A lot, and... of, a lot of words right there you just said. I know, I'm trying to say it quickly. And then, I, oh, I guess we have his quotes, which are in English, which are, I'm ending this now for Super Saiyan. Super Vegeta's is, it's obvious who's been putting in the hard world. <laughs> Wait, what? It's obvious who has been putting in the hard yards. What? The hard yards? Vegeta, it, you don't know what football is. It's obvious who's been putting in the hard yards. <laughs> Super Saiyan 2 is, I'll bet my pride on the field. I've all day, Kakarot. I have the goo on my side. <laughs> I'll bet my pride on defeating you. That's Super Saiyan 2. Super Saiyan God is... Did you ever watch uh, the Spectacular Spider-Man, the cartoon? I think so. I can't remember it, though. Why? So there's a there's a part where Harry Osborn gets addicted to this drug that makes you the Green Goblin, basically. And they call it the goo. <laughs> and that's all of it. <laughs> <laughs> he needs it. I need the goo. Give me the goo. Just like, no, I need the goo, Kakarot. It's the only way I can fight. It's the goo. I need the goo. Give me your goo, Mr. Magoo. Oh, dear. <laughs> Magoo, you've done it again. And then Super Saiyan God, it's time we put an end to this. And then the final form is, there's no limit to a Saiyan's power. Obviously, the best quote comes from Vegeta's. It's obvious you've been putting in the hard yards. Yeah, it's it's hard to fight the hard yards quote. That's pretty impressive. That's a really good quote. That yeah. might actually make him slightly better in my eyes. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's uh, in terms of pure skill, he is better than uh, Frieza and Goku. Uh, it's also funny because I think this is there's this is the main problem with these units, which is. Yeah, they're the strongest at their final forms, but you're the the the, the fight is over. By the yeah, time you're you never get getting them at their final form, so No. The fight is over by that point. So at best you can maybe get him to Super Saiyan God. And thankfully he stops using Gallic Gun. Actually, you know what? He doesn't do Gallic Gun at all. I was gonna I say thought his base form was Gallic Gun as it, the SSR. It's big bang attack. So he doesn't use oh, Gallic really? Gun once. That was the joke. Cool. I wanted it to be that um, he just had five different versions of Gallic Gun, but they were all yeah, the same. Just a different angle every time. Yeah, because that, that's the joke with the, 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 the Frieza and Goku, is that they all have basic-ass attacks. Yeah, their attacks are pretty lame. Yeah, so maybe they heard a little bit of the, the that you know that criticism, and they actually gave some, you know, the, the dunking one is obviously one of the better ones, and it's Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta's, so they're at least going like, okay. Maybe if we put a little bit more effort into the essays, people will... <laughs> if we try a little bit. Yeah. Come on, we can try, right? <laughs> we can try. But yeah, he's a perfectly good Vegeta, and people obviously, I guess, wanted this kind of unit. I think the Transforming units, even though in actuality are hard to use because they never get to their final form, are actually kind of fun to use. Just because They're my it... favorite units in the game. Yeah, they they change up like the only thing that's a pain is that they're, when their link skills changes, which is Goku's because he goes to Super Saiyan three for one turn, and then he has over and a flash, and it's like God damn it! Like now you don't get to super this turn because I did, <laughs> I didn't uh, factor that in is that, that you would lose all your good key links when you turn Super Saiyan three, or more like you wouldn't uh, link with the dudes I have you with is the the thing. True. Yeah. And then also his leader skills goes with Pure Saiyans, which Pure Saiyans seems to be the basic is just the Vegeta. Like, Vegeta seems to always be the leader for Pure Saiyans. I want to say of the three leaders, he's the, all three of them. Yeah, well, that makes sense. I mean, he is the Prince of Saiyans. Yeah. I guess, you know what? When you put it that way, he is the Prince of Saiyans. <laughs> Give some... Yeah. 
Technically, that, that leader skill is his birthright. Yeah. Also, it's uh, Kaioken Goku is one of the sub-leaders for Pure Saiyans. And for some reason, the Super Saiyan 4 free-to-play Goku. Super Saiyan 4 free-to-play Goku. Which is weird. All right. <laughs> whatever it's got to be. Yeah, whatever. And then also he starts as Super Saiyan Vegeta, which makes it so you can't use LR Vegeta at all. <laughs> you just can't. Nah. Sucks to suck. This it guy does. sounds better than LR Vegeta, though. Oh, yeah, he is. It's just more, like, annoying because he only stays that way for one turn. <laughs> oh, yeah, so, you like, if they did anything else, uh, it wouldn't be that way. Yeah, exactly. And it works for something like uh, Goku and uh, Frieza because no one's bringing a final form. Uh, Frieza. Or yeah. Goku. Or, like, yeah. a, a base Goku. I thought he starts base, doesn't he? No, he's SSR and base. Uh, S- he's a Super Saiyan and SSR. Yeah, okay, but, but nobody brings LR Goku anyway, so... Yeah, no one brings LR Goku, and there's not a lot of good Super Saiyan uh, stuff out there. I don't know. Either way. Uh, so yeah, I think he's perfectly fine for a transformation unit. And that, that last skill, if you ever get there, is very funny. Because you can... It, if he goes first, and then you stack it with someone that like turns the entire board into rainbows, you can have an entire board of rainbows <laughs> for a turn. <laughs> By That's then, the funny. fight will be over, but, you know, it's just silly gimmicks. I, I, in terms of gimmicks, he has a very fun gimmick. Uh, but what do you feel yeah, about... Yeah, I, I like him in general. Like, as... Well, I like his... What he, like, is built to be. I, I love those kind of units. Like, I think that's something Okan needs more of. I know everyone shits on it, because re my max damage, is not high enough. But, yeah. like, fuck you. Like, you don't need to have... A team that does six trillion damage to win in Dokkan. So just play fun shit. Let them make fun shit. Yeah. And shut up. Just let me have fun for once. Just for God's sake. <laughs> just enjoy yourself. Exactly. So I would uh oh I also say the, the one of the you know what now I'm just gonna this was a negative, but now I feel with the full package it makes sense. Super Vegeta's art looks fucking terrible, but also with this quote about the hard yards, it makes one hundred percent sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah he's like super like he almost looks bit crushed he's like fucking tiny he looks like if the michelin man was told that he looked weak so he decided to go <laughs> at the gym Get for a while ripped that's what he looks oh, like he to looks me. awful it's really bad it's really bad uh, but what did, what did uh free and goresh say it looks like someone didn't hold the shift key when they resized <laughs> the image yeah so it does just all fucked up looking he does 100 percent look like that even his Saiyan, like, the his Super Saiyan aura around him is trying to, like, conform to, like, his weird fucking body. He look like, his Super Saiyan aura looks like the chair that Kamiguru sits in. <laughs> uh, so what do you feel about this, dude? How do you feel about uh, transforming um... Vegeta? Because if I asked you just how do you feel about Vegeta, I feel like we would be here. Yeah, it would be here for a while. Uh, two out of five. Hmm. I think the hard yards have won me over. I think I'm going to give him like a round of four out of five. So that averages a round to three out of five. Three out of five. That's yep. respectable. Uh, okay, let's see. And now for the last two dudes to be going on the big boy scale, as promised last episode, it's going to be me and you. So who wants to go first in this one? Uh, um, You can go first. Okay. I'll say the specific Zenrot that I'm going to be putting on the scale is Zenrot, parentheses, uh, mod years. So this okay. is the, the original Zenrot that I remember. This is the Zenrot that I remembered because when I first started the sub, it was, uh, wow, this guy really likes to argue with a bunch of people. And then and then after I became a mod, uh, and actually before I became a mod, I started doing the, the lists. And then you would say, I think it was specifically the Piccolo one, you said put some respect on physical piccolo because i put him number one <laughs> and you were like yes <laughs> yes that was a wise decision in retrospect yes the wisest decision because the physical piccolo has aged extremely well compared to the lr piccolo <laughs> who has aged like sour milk yeah he sucks <laughs> and then once i became a mod i eventually learned like actually you're not that much of a hard ass and sometimes you just really like Oh, and so that was enough to make me go yeah i do really like Oh. <laughs> yeah you do and you were willing to start up. If it was not for that Zen route, we would not have Modcast because you were the one who asked, you know, we should do something for the sub video related. Does anyone want to make a podcast with me? And I said, yes. And then, you know, you didn't see that. So you said, is nobody going to do this with me? And I said, <laughs> I, don't, I already said yes. 
I'm good to go. And then we got Penta out of his foxhole. So, and then we started. Yeah, I don't this... know how we did that. He went right, right back in not too long afterward. I mean, yeah, to be fair, there's enough episodes with Penta in there. I think it's because he's like Finnish. So they're naturally just scared of sunlight or like non cold winter lines. But either way, that's the, that's the Zen run I'm putting up. And it's, and I guess the, it ends with after he leaves. That's the end of the era for the, um, the mod Zen rot. He constantly had to take to the face uh, full power Frieza memes for close to a year. Yeah, that was that shit never ended. It never ended. Even after I got him, <laughs> it didn't go away. No, people would still go like, how's that full power Frieza? And you're like, I got him already. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. He's all right. And then they go, oh, damn it. This was the one thing. You also allowed me to, I'm going to say right now, is that we were the ones who eventually killed the Dokkan uh, subreddit tier list because you allowed me to put Ninja Murasaki on the list. Yes. <laughs> and then people started going, how come General Blue can't be on the list? And I was like, you fucks, you're missing the point. Yeah, you're, you're taking our, like, our, uh, our little joke and making it this huge thing. And then that's how fucking General Blue got on the tier list. Yep. And Zahal has had to put, pick up the pieces ever since. I think that's a good summary of where the Dokkan sub is, is that we just fucked it up, and then Zahal has to try to hold it all together now that we were like... Yeah, after the, the, anymore. the destruction that we've left in its wake. Yep. So for Mod Zenran, I think I'll give a, you know, I'll give a fair 5 out of 5. He This this wouldn't exist if it was not for him. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's that's fair. That's a fair score. Yeah, that's fair. So what what uh, what what do you got for the big boy? What do you feel about uh, Mod Zenrod? Actually, you know what? Because you should have oh, a say me. in Mod okay. Zenrod. I'll, I'll say um, I'll give a, a four out of five. Hmm. All right. So that's a four point five I'll for five. Mod Zenrod. It's fair. Uh, what Wokey are you putting up on the list? So my my Wokey of choice is mispronunciation Wokey. Ah, oh, god damn it. <laughs> My Wokey of choice is the Wokey that tries to say words that you hear other people say and they say it correctly in canon and you still pronounce them incorrectly. I have no idea. It it might be my single favorite thing about the videos that we make because we watch the shows that we talk about and they say their names in the shows and you still say the name wrong. Uh, you know, this actually goes beyond just that. Uh, I've realized recently that we've been calling the Banga in Tactics Advance the Bangle. <laughs> so, yeah, we have been. We've been putting an L on it. And that started from me going, oh, I'm not going to put, put a healing on a ball of fucking Bangle. And <laughs> since then, we've just kept saying Bangle. <laughs> to this day, my favorite thing ever is you calling Pecan, Pecan? like the nut. <laughs> oh, like yeah. like a pecan pie is how you pronounce his name. I have not. I still can't live with that shit. That, that, that you talk about the, the thing. Best I, thing. I, it's the one thing I can't escape because no matter what, where I go, I'll people will fucking tell me. I've had to have conversations with you've fucked up my like work life because someone in, <laughs> at work mentioned uh, pecan. And I was like, oh, I, was, I gotta say pecan. I was like, but no, it's wrong. I can't look dumb. <laughs> so I actually said uh, pecan when I wanted to say pecan, and I had like a small, like two second, like you, like jump forward as I was going to say it. <laughs> oh, good God! Okay, I'm gonna give uh, mispronunciation Wokey a solid seven out of five. Solid seven out of five. Seven out of five. You, you know, now it's my turn to talk about mispronunciation, Wokey. Because let me tell you how far this shit goes. I say words wrong in my head when I'm reading. <laughs> it's really a pain in the ass because I'm like, I tried reading books and then sometimes a word will show up and I have to read the word multiple times because I'm like, that doesn't sound right. That's not right. <laughs> You have, like, whatever dyslexia is, but for listening instead of just reading. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's, it fucking sucks to, especially when you're, like, an anime fan, and you know what's the number one thing people who like anime will get on your shit about? The fucking names of people! <laughs> it's like, no, no, that's not the right way of saying it. I'm like, I don't, <laughs> well, too bad, because I'm not gonna about to change everything I know. Kills me. 
Uh, you know, I'll give. You know what? This this is a tough one because I also fucking hate mispronunciation, Wookie. <laughs> so I'll give him a. You know, I'll give him a four out of five. I think that's a respectable. Consider that it's the jokes that come afterwards. If if nobody told me I was mispronouncing it, I wouldn't hate the mispronunciation. But here we are. <laughs> the amount of people who fucking get on my case by saying uh, Hydrogeton isn't his name, but it's like the what what is his name the the guy with the h hydragon hedgekin what are you talking about the pokemon no i'm talking about the fucking uh the thing that tapion fights her rudigarn there you go rudigarn <laughs> hydro get on is a Yu-Gi-Oh card okay maybe i'm not thinking about hydro get on it's the it's the kkk member hey hachi hachek hachiak Hachiak, there you go. <laughs> I wasn't able to say his... I couldn't remember Tapion his name. doesn't even fight that guy. <laughs> Fuck it, four out of five. So if you combine the two <laughs> scores, you get like around, what, a, a six? A six out of five? <laughs> Fucking Tapion. Oh, yeah, or as I call him, a Tapio or something. I don't know. <laughs> like the Casio keyboard. <laughs> it's a 5.5. 5.5. So to do a quick summary, we got uh, of the of the big boys put on the scale today. We got Copy Vegeta coming in at a 15 out of 5. Uh, Super Saiyan Vegeta, Transforming Vegeta is a 3 out of 5. Uh, Mod Zenrod is a 4.5 out of 5. And then I, Wokey Mispronunciation, is 5 out of 5. And then the Zenrod is, of course, Mod Zenrod. Oh, that's a lot of boys to put on that on uh, put on that scale. <laughs> Yeah, that was a long scale. I don't know. This is what happens when you have multiple units. That's why I'm saying there's a probably not going to answer all the questions, but I'll try to answer as much as possible. So again, if you have any questions, so uh, I, I'm sorry to cut in to this this recording, yeah, but sure. remember when I it, over the new year when I did a free copy of Smash Bros. Yes. So it says on that tweet. I'm choosing the winner on January 1st of 2019. Someone just replied to me right now, retweeted the tweet, followed me, and uploaded a video of him doing Bruno's Arrivederci. <laughs> it's the end of March. <laughs> kind of a little bit too late at that point. A little late, but man, he recorded the video and everything. So now are you feeling like, oh no. <laughs> I don't know what to do, because do I... Do I respond and say, like, you fucking missed it, bro? And then he's like, oh, man. Or do I, like, what do I do? You might need to give him, like, a consolation prize of some sort. Send him, like, a tiny stuffed uh, fucking Bruno. Yeah, there you go. But then, and then they'll actually send, send, send him an autograph of Bruno San Martino, the old wrestler. <laughs> and be like, here you go. Thank you for the Bruno. All right. Well, you'll figure that out. Actually, if you want to leave a question about how Zen can reward that guy, feel free to leave a comment. Yeah. Uh, one. So the first question we got in. This one's from YouTube. It comes from X uh, X Nighthawk nine one one nine X, who says, "Sorry for double dipping. I forgot I posted a question on the YouTube, but thanks for answering my question. That Z- Zahal bit had me dying." It was great because the hall eventually had to also realize that what we were doing to him, which was putting him on the scale. Uh, did he find out? Of it? I have, people told him eventually. <laughs> Rage I, I never saw a reaction. Well, we're, we're waiting for the reaction. One day we'll get a reaction. I think we were fair to the hall of Vegeta level confidence on the scale. And then my, my question for next week is how would you rate D free on the big boy scale? Hmm. That's our boy D free. I think that's a similar case of like we would need to actually think about yeah, it. Yeah, it requires some deliberation time. Because there's different forms as uh, D free that come to mind. It's the same thing as the hall, but now I feel like we need just a little bit more time. You know what I'm saying? I think yeah, uh, D free deserves that level of respect for helping us out whenever we ask for it, and then shitting on his favorite units in the meantime. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, that was the YouTube, and now let me go on to the Twitter questions. I have to find the fucking thread real quick. 
Oh, I guess, you know, while I'm looking for it, I'll just do a quick, like, boop, 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 boop. Rayleigh Watch 2019 coming back in it again. Uh, no signs of actual Rayleigh banner coming to uh, Japan at any time. Uh, but for some reason, uh, whoever does data mining in Legends is saying that a Rayleigh's data it's is also found. Renzi. Is it also Renzi? Okay. It's also Renzi. So. I don't know. I don't know. We have to see. I really do feel like if there was any time to release a rally, that would make sense. It's um, April Fools, but I actually don't know how to guess how Legends repeats people. Because for all I know, fucking Aureli and Super Saiyan uh, Blue Gogeta will release at the same time on the same banner for some reason. <laughs> That's possible. I have to think they won't make a really, uh pull unit on her own. Like she'll have to be in someone else's. Because the same thing is going to happen that happened in Dokkan, where everyone's like, Oh my fucking god, you're wasting a banner on a Rayleigh. And it's like, fuck you, guy. Yeah, fuck you. Not that shit. You piece of shit. Which also... You fucking asshole. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see about that. The other one I could see potentially it being is maybe being one of those Legends Roadwork type of things. And But that's just me going like, I've got I wish he was free. So I didn't have to... <laughs> Please be free. Please be free. Please, it'd be as good as the Trunks is, and at least be better than the Goku. <laughs> Let me put it that way, at least be better than the Goku. Which the Goku is... Goku could be good one day. Yeah. And, you know, one, one of those days. Yeah, definitely. He could. It's it's potential there. So that's a Rayleigh watch for now. Join us uh, whenever I find... Someone said, like, I thought there would be an Rayleigh watch every episode. And I said, no, it's only when I think that the banner might be coming at some point. <laughs> Otherwise, it would just be a lot of me going, boo, 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 boo. Rayleigh Watch, there is no fucking news. Yeah, it's, it, a Rayleigh Watch is for, like, it could be happening. Exactly. I'm not here to make some fucking drama out of nowhere, like, oh my god, did you hear what Nano said about a Rayleigh? He's fucking cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag cancel nanogenics for disrespecting a Rayleigh. One time, uh, it totally happened. I was walking by and I said, Nano, how you feel about a Rayleigh? And he said, who? And I was like, damn. And then he called me ugly. <laughs> I was like, why, Nano? I've respected you for so many years. Look out for the next episode of uh, To Be Released called You're Not Nanogenics. <laughs> You're Not Nanogenics. Oh, if you could get Nano in for the episode called You're Not That Right. <laughs> you know what, again, well, this is something we'll talk about off screen. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go into the Twitter questions. Thank you, uh, everyone who sent in a question. Speaking of me not knowing how to pronounce a name, this question comes in from Cookie, hashtag Krabby Gang. Uh, would you guys like to see more Earth-Shattering Showdown Dokkan Fest, aka Transforming Goku, Frieza, and Vegeta? If so, who would you want? Cell and Trunks come to mind as likely. So far, they all have five forms in the unique once-only ability in the last form. So it's basically asking, would you want more units like the the one, the Vegeta, the, the Frieza, and the Goku? Which we just talked about. We both don't have a problem yes. with them. <laughs> both of us say yes, in fact. Yeah. It depends on who would be the unit, though. I think it would be funny if you did Trunks, where halfway into it he turned into the blue hair Trunks. So oh, he's... like the, like he went Super Saiyan, then buff, then blue hair from Dragon Ball Super, and then Super Saiyan Dragon Ball Super. <laughs> yeah, with the big ass sword. That's the way I would that want would it to be go. Funny as shit. Uh, I don't think you could do it with Cell, just because uh, first uh, first form Cell you got the suck. Second imperfect cell. I don't know what you would do with him. <laughs> he doesn't have anything other than he also has a form of suck, but it's not as good. And he's big, bulky, and dumb. And then you have perfect cell, and then you have perfect cell again. <laughs> now, what you would do is you would do imperfect cell. Mm -hmm. Um. No. Okay. Here's what you you would do: egg cell, where he, he's still like a fetus. Then you would do imperfect cell, semi perfect cell, perfect cell, super fat, I'm gonna fucking kill myself cell, and oh. then super perfect cell. Okay, that'd be pretty good. That'd be a pretty good transformation, Will. Uh, on the same note, I would like something where it starts as old Demon King Piccolo, Demon King Piccolo, and then he vomits out an egg and you become Kid Piccolo. 
Ma Jr. <laughs> Teen Ma Jr. And then finally, the final form is the the Piccolo that kills Goku with the special beam cannon. So his final ult is always having a Goku show up in the background to hold him. <laughs> That's pretty great. Yeah, I think there's a lot of ways you can do a cool transformation unit. You just have to, like, think about it. There's other, there's also other dudes you can do besides the DBZ. You can do some old DB ones. You can do Master Roshi. You can do Master Roshi regular, buff, Jackie Chun, and then final is final forms. You yeah, know? I can see that. Definitely. Uh, the answer is yeah. Thank you for the questions. Cookie. Next question comes in from Super Saiyan God. Super Saiyan Johan, who at one moment, who asks, do you think Dokkan will make cards out of the Dragon Ball Super manga? Because I want to see Super Saiyan Goku Black, by the way, still waiting on Int Goku Black. And then he gave us a picture of like the three, like a drawing of three Goku Blacks. One is regular Goku Black, one is Rose, and the last one is like (laughs) Super Saiyan Goku Black, like looking ready to square up with someone. Like really looking ready to fight some, fight a fool. That's Uh, fair. Yeah. From the super manga, it's going to be weird because eventually, I actually don't know. Is any of that like weird like Namek stuff going to be turned into the anime? Um, I don't know. Yeah. It's... I, I think they did say they were going to adapt Moro, but I'm not 100% sure on that, so I might be wrong. Hmm. You know, it's possible, like, especially since considering if they're going to keep doing Int Goku Black, they need to stop making base form Goku Black, because you can't make multiple teams of just Goku Black in base form. Yeah, no, you can't. No, <laughs> you really can't. You you can't, so you need more. And it sucks, It I guess it kind of sucks for all Goku Black fans that he only has two forms, but if they add in Super Saiyan, at least that's another Goku Black you can run. I'm still waiting for, like, you know how there's a Goku Black and Zamasu? I'm uh-huh. waiting for them to do a Zamasu and Goku Black that can be run with Goku Black and Zamasu because Zamasu's name came first. <laughs> I think that'd be pretty good. Uh, thank you for the question. And again, uh, Ink Goku Black coming in next week. Just follow Goresh, and when he stops posting up the Goku Black versus... When he stops shitting on Goku Black? <laughs> yeah, eventually. You'll know when who comes out first, either Metal Cool or Goku Black, depending on the whatever picture he puts up. Uh, next question comes in from Camden Filler, hashtag Sopple Squad, who asks, What's a new Dokkan Fest unit you do you guys expect? What new Dokkan Fest units do you guys expect? Um... Again, kind of hard to know nowadays because they have basically everyone now. Yeah, pretty much. The only ones that don't have it are even Dragon Ball has some dudes. Like if I wanted more Dragon Ball dudes, I could see maybe a Roshi. But then it's like, I think the only Roshi we're going to get is an LR Roshi, which will come next. And also someone has turned on the vacuum. Can you hear that? Uh, No. Okay, good. I can hear it, which is really annoying. Because there's a vacuum and a loud ass fucking TV in the background. Uh, but what the what was I saying? Something about yeah, I don't know. I don't know who could possibly to be next because it's everyone's here. Who's left? That's a good point. Yeah, who even is left? Yeah, Super Saiyan two Gohan maybe, but there's LR Gohan, so that's the problem with LRs is that once a unit has an LR, there should be in. Especially if they're not a duo, there's no reason to release like another version of that person. I think the only reason you'd want to release a new Super Saiyan two Gohan yeah, is yeah, but to... I mean do though. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Next question comes in from most creative name who asks, "Have you ever played or heard of Spider Man Web of Shadows?" Uh, wow. Yes, I have. I really like that game. We'll talk about Web of Shadows for a bit. Uh, it's a Spider-Man game where you're basically the only superhero left in New York and Venom starts setting up these pods around the city that you don't know about that he's throwing people into to turn them into more symbiotes and it turns into like a zombie movie halfway through where like New York is fucking destroyed and all the like people are turned into symbiotes that Spider-Man trying to help stop and there's like a safe zone that S.H.I.E.L.D. sets up that like has an anti-symbiote barrier and they're trying to get in and infect everybody. It's pretty crazy. You fight a symbiote Wolverine and uh, in that game you can choose to be Black Suit Spider-Man or Red Suit Spider-Man. It's like a morality system. And uh, 
every boss you beat, there's a, they have a red suit and a black suit ending, so you can choose to be good or bad. And in the Wolverine one, he grabs Symbiote Wolverine and lifts him up over his head and rips his body in half. Jesus Christ, it's brutal. Yeah, it's pretty fucked up. It's pretty great. Uh, and they All of them have ones like that, where like the bad guy ending, he just beats the shit out of him. Nice. I think, like, in the... Well, you fight Symbiote Electro also. And I think in the red suit one, you just kind of stop him, and you're like, you gotta listen to me! But if you do the uh, black suit one, I think he just beats him until he's unconscious. Wow. That is yep. pretty damn intense. Uh, I have not played it. I just heard of it. So, there you go. Thank you for the question, most creative name. Next question comes in from Super Bright Adrian, who asks, Will Dokkan have a collab like they did with OPTC? There will be, again, I think we talked about this in Legends Road work, there will probably be somewhere down the line a uh, crossover with Legends. It has to be at some point, right? Yeah, there has to be at some point. I just don't know what it would be. Uh, I think it'd be pretty funny if they both just uh, exchanged memes with each other, because that's why that kind of thing exists. And besides that, I could see the next collab being something like um, that... uh, jrpg coming out for dragon ball that everyone has high hopes for and then the second they see more stuff about it we'll start complaining so (laughs) inevitably that's gonna happen that's super gonna happen that's just the cycle of things though but in terms of other uh gotcha games like optc i don't know is there it it has like like we said in roadwork you should watch legends roadwork by the way it has to be there has to be it's number two so it's number two will have to be fake grand order. So they'll have to see a fake grand order crossover. <laughs> it only makes pretty sense. Funny. I still think it's pretty funny that Dokkan gives rewards for number one and fake grand order does not. It just goes like, mm, no, you don't get anything for reaching number <laughs> you one. You get nothing. Nothing. You're here forever. Thank you, you for the question. Just deal with it. Uh-huh. Next question comes in from Bunny Key O. Bunny-o. And he asks, what's a manga or anime that you've been put off reading or watch for a while? So it's more like something you know you want to probably read, but you put it off? Uh, so so not put off as in like, ugh, but put off like you've been putting it off. Yeah, like, uh, you know, okay, someday it. I'll read it for sure. Why don't you go, Zen? Uh, part 8 of JoJo, because I was so fucking in love. Um, part 7 that I'm scared to move on. I, I want to keep Johnny and Gyro in my memory, but uh, I'm about to start now. Someone's going to be editing this one, that's for sure. I forgot to put on my mic. <laughs> I had it off because of the fucking um, uh, the vacuum cleaner going off, so I'll edit that part out. <laughs> that's not a problem. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a feeling that that was coming. Yeah. Um, uh, I eventually had to stop reading Jojo Leon, but that was only because it's a mystery. So, wait, is it not Jojo Lion? I've totally been calling it Jojo Lion. Is it Jojo Lion? I've been calling it Jojo. I have no idea. That's just what I've been calling it because I think that name is funny as shit. I uh, don't go based off what I've said. <laughs> don't trust me. Uh, I've been calling it Jojo Lion. But I don't think that there's... I don't think anyone's ever said it out loud except for Japanese people. So, again, don't know. That's how I saw the word. That's that's how I've been saying it. So, Jojo Lion makes more sense because that's actually what... I never noticed that the word lion was in there. I just been calling it Jojo Lion. I, maybe that's right. Uh... But the basic thing is that it's a mystery. So... I find it annoying when a mystery is being told and, like, I don't... It's taking a long time to do anything because that's the way Araki, or however you say that guy's name, the JoJo writer, uh, is making uh, that part eight. It's going by very slowly. And for me, I'm just, like... I'm not like other people. I'm not like uh, Mr. Eat Your Butt, uh, better known as Mr. Eat Your Booty, <laughs> who, will, um, who can, like, read, like, every chapter and go, like, oh, man another thing revealed and another mystery i'm just like this i don't want to wait a month (laughs) to see like a small i guess it's the same thing about hunter x hunter where people are like i I waited a very long time for this and now i have to continue waiting a very long time for this to actually be done um 
So I just kind of want it to be done because that style of story, I'm just like, okay, I need to wait because I'm just going to be annoyed. And that's not fair to the to the part that I'm annoyed by its release schedule <laughs> when it has nothing to do with the actual manga itself. You know what I'm right. saying? You know what I mean? Right. Uh, but yeah, there's some, it's still, ve- it's very Jojo-esque, but I understand not wanting to, you know, jump right into it, especially after the fucking ride that is part seven. Cause I felt that way when I was starting a uh, part eight for sure. Is there any anime you can think of that you've been like not put off not for watching? Really? I just haven't been, uh, watching too much new anime. I'm watching part five judge every week and then I'm. I'm done. Okay. Uh, for me, the anime that I keep putting off is Dragon Ball Super. Um, again, I think I've said it before. I started watching Super the first three episodes, and then I skipped all the way till um, to- the Topo fight in the Tournament of Power. So I skipped all Goku Black. I skipped all Copy of Vegeta. I skipped all that. And it wasn't because I was like, oh, I'm angry about the quality of this show. It was more like, I don't know. I just felt like it. So at some yeah. point I was like, at some point I'm going to have to watch all the super, but every single time, like t- today I was like, Oh, you know what? When I started Utena, I was like, Oh, I should start super. Cause it might come back. And then I looked at it and then I said, you know what? Re- Revolutionary girl. Utena sounds pretty good right now. <laughs> so let me, <laughs> let me start that up first. And I think I've made the right decision because it's been a delight <laughs> every episode. So but that's definitely the anime in my mind where I'm like, I have to see that eventually. And then I have to also finish GT because I stopped at Super Vegeta, uh, Super Vegeta, Super 17. I didn't even get to see Super 17 because the build up to Super 17 was so god awful. I had to stop when they started to do another board game episode. I was like, I can't fall for this again. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. And then in terms of manga, I think it's probably... It's probably a tie between Bleach and One Piece in terms of, like, I plan to start eventually. And then, I guess also Toriko, but that's more just because I think it's funny that I haven't read Toriko yet. Toriko's really good. You should read it. That's what I, I heard. I was surprised at how much I ended up liking Because I thought I was going to be like, this is fucking dumb. Hmm. Uh, but, but it was pretty good. Okay. Uh, and, and some other, I've also wanted to, I like, there's like a long list of things of like, I oh, will have to read that eventually. I know the original run of Astro Boy, I have to, I keep putting off for whatever reason, but I really like Pluto, which is based off of the, um, which is, a, which is, I think I, I told you this on Twitter before, but just to explain everyone what Pluto is, it is a manga in which the manga person said, yo, this arc of Astro Boy is awesome. I kind of want to remake it, though, so that other ones can understand why it's so awesome, like when I had it as a kid. So then he asked the estate of Astro Boy, can I can I remake this one specific arc of Astro Boy? And then they were like, uh, OK, I guess you can. And so then with permission from the Astro Boy estate, he um, he was able to make this one manga based entirely off of this arc called The World's Strongest. And it's fantastic in every conceivable way it's the one thing where i'm like uh there's been rights over who can make it into an anime and they finally might be turning it into it but then every step of the way i'm like i don't know if this can actually be done because the manga is just so amazing and perfect in terms of the art style the art style is just so uh, vivid it's hard to imagine if they can actually do this any form of justice and which is, I guess, some of the feeling that a lot of people are getting from the second season of uh, one punch man based off the trailer that dropped <laughs> It's that yeah, yikes. Yeah. It's that's it's that style of detailed and it's that good where I'm like they have to hit this out of the park otherwise what the fuck was the point of even trying to do this? So yeah, those those, yeah. those are my ans- those are my answers. It's Astro Boy, Toriko, Bleach and then for anime it's Dragon Ball Super. <laughs> All right, that's and fair. GT. And GT just to say both. Chances are I'll finish Super before I finish GT. <laughs> Yeah, GT is a fucking mess. But that's mostly because I lost uh, access to the uh, the dub of GT, which is the only way I want to experience GT is the dub version. <laughs> ah. So there you go. Uh, next question comes from LX Ningen, who asks, 
How good at life would copy sludge be if it ate the modcast? What are the strengths and weaknesses of a copy, I guess, copy sludge modcast? Uh, so is he asking us to put on the big boy scale, copy us? No, I think he's asking, like, so the same sludge that copied Vegeta, what would it be if it was a copy modcast? Which would be, like, what would be its opposite? So for one thing, it would have a consistent release schedule if it's based off of the modcast. <laughs> And then I guess, yeah, it would have to have a copy cast. So it would have copy Penta, copy Zenrot, and then copy me. That would be the original. Yeah, I don't think it would be able to absorb every single person that's ever been on Modcast. So it would only have just to take... Just too many? Yeah, yeah, that's just too many people at that point. It would stretch itself too thin. Um, its weaknesses would be that it's based off of trying to beat the original Modcast, which is a very low bar. I feel it could definitely aim higher... <laughs> like of all yeah it's not a great uh copy target no especially since i feel like to be releases now it's getting there it's gonna reach the quality of uh modcast someday it definitely is a lot more fun to record compared to later day modcast uh not to say that i i enjoyed all my time on modcast don't make that be don't make that start being a weird thing of don't start weird beef (laughs) between me and old me (laughs) cancel new wokey yeah cancel new wokey uh, in terms of its strength, again, it would have a very consistent release schedule. <laughs> it would actually figure out a way to put its podcast up on iTunes <laughs> so that people could enjoy it like an actual podcast. Yeah, and in terms of weaknesses, it would actually have weaknesses because, you know, you wouldn't have Golden Frieza. I would assume it would do the opposite of Golden Frieza, and it would actually read the Gami, le- the Gami tier list fully <laughs> translated. <laughs> <laughs> giving it the benefit of the doubt it would be it would be gami and game press put together gami press exactly get 100 percent be that uh thank you for the question and this last question this last question comes from magic beam at lr ricardin nine who asks magic bean or magic beam with an m magic beam beam damn not, it. not beans sorry damn it that's way worse yes what are the most nostalgic slash throwback moments you get from dokkan uh, not counting, I guess, something like, uh, Kid Goku, who is meant to be nostalgic by design. Uh, actual nostalgia you get from, um, uh, Dokkan. Every time I look at Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta, uh, Gogeta, I remember to be released. <laughs> so that's something. Yeah, I think there's two things that when I think of them, I get nostalgia for Dokkan. And it's because I was, it was two separate years I was on vacation during it. One of them is Dragon Ball, the terrible fusions banner, where the best card was the Broly Goku fusion. Yes, yes, okay, I remember this. And then the other one was Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta and Omega Shenron on Global, where they were to be released. That's my other one, because I was on vacation during both of them. Both fantastic moments in the history of Dokkan, for sure. Um... When I look at really old R's that were, like, um, event-specific, like, when I look at my old Cop Krillin and I remember, like, man, remember the stupid-ass grind that was Cop Krillin (laughs) about how he needed specific medals even to awaken? That's right. He needed, like, a bunch, right? Yeah, he needed a bunch. And it wasn't even to, like, Dokkan. It was to Z-Awaken. Back in the day, there were units that had to Z-Awaken using medals. And I think another good example is the SSR uh, Tech Final Form Frieza, Dokkaning into an SSR <laughs> Golden Frieza. Golden Frieza that's in the Namek category. Yes, who's actually worse than base form Final Form Frieza. Like, uh-huh. So, and th- for that very reason, we can never get a fucking rebirth of the original Tech uh, Final Form Frieza. Cause he yeah, because fuck- he already Dokkans and it sucks ass. Yeah, and then Global made him a TUR, which people thought, like, oh, maybe he's better. He's not. <laughs> He, he ended up not being stuff like that it's like weird little things of like man i remember when this game used to be that way it's fucked up that it used to be this way yeah it really was yeah uh thinking back a certain old playing the world tournament i certainly sometimes think back of the days where you had to fight like a hundred world tournament dudes to get one guaranteed ssr ticket that was uh yeah i remember that that was also a nightmare 
Yeah, and Japan, but Global never got to experience that because uh, when it came to Global, after the year-long wait for it to get to Global, they made it 80 wins instead of 100. Which was more manageable, but also fuck that, because that was before there was AoE. The only AoE unit was Broly. So, if you had Broly, you were golden. If you didn't have Broly, well, congratulations. <laughs> it was fucked. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's the kind of stuff I remember for sure. Uh, yeah, and this nostalgia. You know, I, it's weird to think about the nostalgia for Dokkan, especially, but it, it is old at this yeah. point. Uh, super old. And then I also remember certain units just because, like, I had a fun time talking about them on the sub. Uh, back when the sub wasn't as uh, big as it is now. I guess back when it was smaller. It's a super nice way to put it. Yeah. Well, that, that's the way of saying it. Just because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to shit on the people who, like, are still talking and doing their community right. stuff, but you know, right. Do your when, thing. when, you do when, you. yeah, when you get, when you get bigger, just certain shit changes. Um, I've pro- I'll probably feel the exact same way. If I ever get bigger than I currently am, is that I'll always remember back when it was like the small, small group of people of us just trying to figure stuff out. But then once it gets too big and there's too many things just like all coming towards me, I'm like, I, I'm having harder times remembering it because it's a lot more. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Stuff like that. Too many moving parts. Yeah. Uh, and then in terms of other nostalgia things, I'll also always remember uh, D for his first um, modcast one, just because he says uh, these nuts. Uh, so mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go. I still remember. Remember when we had Dino on, and he was the very first guest we ever had. Yes. And his Skype handle was D's Nuts because he didn't want anyone to find his like actual one. Oh, was it oh, was it Rhyme or was it D Free who said these D Free said it, but Rhymes was that was his actual Skype username. Oh. Crazy. I did not you know, I did not remember that. But that's also because I was super fucking nervous when Rhyme first got on. <laughs> I was like, oh fuck, I've never really talked to this dude and uh, he's a big fucking deal, and then he ended up being a very nice guy. Yeah, Rhyme's quite a cool guy. Yeah, all the dudes we've had for guests are cool dudes. Uh, I don't know about that Nano guy. Yeah, who knows? We'll have to figure out when he comes back. If Nano comes back next week, you know what? Here's the here's the thing. If Nano comes on next week for a canceled Nano for for the special uh, to be released episode called <laughs> Canceled Nano, then he will be one hundred percent a good dude, and. uh it will be funny that we'll have an entire episode dedicated to canceling Nano <laughs> with Balls him on there. Support Nano. Yeah, also support Nano always. He's a very nice guy. I'm hashtag cancel Nanogenics. <laughs> hashtag cancel Nanogenics. And with that uh, nostalgic trip down memory lane, we'll say that's another episode to be released. Thank you all for joining me, and thank you, Jen. Jen, fuck me, mispronunciation. Wokey strikes again. Mm-hmm. Not like we make videos every single day. Okay. Not like you know my name by now. Listen, Jen, I don't need you to tell me <laughs> that I don't remember your name. Now I need someone to Photoshop my little icon guy, but with like, like girl hair. Oh, like a girl version of Zen? Jen Rado? <laughs> yeah, Jen Rado. Perfect. I want nothing but fan art of Jen Rado, which is basically your avatar, but in full girl form. Uh-huh. And lady, what is it? Lady, what? Lady form. There you go. Perfect. Uh, thanks again, everyone. Say goodbye, Zen. Bye, guys. See, that time I got it right. I didn't say Jen. <laughs> it took you a few tries. <laughs> <laughs>